Hello everyone, and welcome to another Coding with Lying video. Uh, so this time I am probably going to be mostly talking about Entity AI Flee by Health as an example of how you can make two tasks that do effectively the same thing, but one of which is definably smarter. But uh, if you're not particularly into the coding side of things, then there is an annotation on the screen right now that you can use to skip ahead to something a bit more in-gamey that you might enjoy a bit better. So, with that in mind, uh, let's start off. So, Entity AI Flee by Health is a task that the future mobs have access to, which builds sort of essentially on how Entity AI Avoid Entity is used in the vanilla mobs. Uh, and for those of you who don't know, that task is what makes villagers run away from, uh, from zombies, and it's what makes uh, creepers run away from cats. So that task is just looking for a specific uh, type of entity nearby, and if it's there, then it decides to flee from it. So Flee by Health expands that behavior by taking into account the entity's health to try and determine if it's actually in any real danger. And if it is, then it actually flees, it just, in, it just uses the exact same behavior that Avoid Entity does. So, when I first made it, it was fairly... not, not particularly well fleshed out, but here we go. Uh, so we've got basically the same set of stats that the original Avoid Entity had, and then we've also got Health Percent. So, this is filled in, goodbye Keto, uh, this is filled in from initialization, so we just get a float value which determines the percentage of our health that we want to start reacting at. So if the entity is below that level of health, uh, which is say if this doesn't fire, which is if its health is above the percentage of its total health, uh, then we go through the lists and we find someone to run from. The difference here is that because we're not actually fleeing from a specific class of creature, we actually have to find a creature nearby to run from. So, what's happening here is that we are getting all of the entity living, which is pretty much every mob entity in the game, uh, within a specific radius. And we are looping through them all to see if any of them are going, and if any of them are set to attack our creature. That's what we get here, get attack target equals this creature. And if it is, and it is closer than the last one we found on that list, then that is the guy that we want to be running from. Uh, we also have a secondary loop here. Uh, this was, again, kind of put together quick hash hash, but yeah, anyways. Um, which is just looking for players. Players uh, extend from the same Entity Living base class that Entity Livings do, but they actually miss a lot of the same functions. They, they do, for example, don't have a, a get attack target. They don't have an attack target at all. It's an AI thing. So, we can't be, look, be looping through players looking for their attack target. We actually have to just unilaterally determine that players are probably going to kill me if I'm low on health. So, for them, we just check if they're the closest entity, and, they, and if their distance is less than that, and you know. So, players are unilaterally considered a threat, basically. If the entity is low on health, it's going to run from you, whether or not you're actually trying to hurt it. Bit of a limitation, but not one that we can really change. So then we just run the standard avoid entity function of getting a random location away from the creature that we have determined to run away from, uh, and if it just happens to be closer to that entity than we are currently, then we ignore that and uh, loop again. Uh, well, actually, this one doesn't actually have the loops, this one just picks it and then blanks. Uh, again, a little bit of a limitation, means it'll want to fire, but it won't occasionally. And then we just continue up until we have ended our path. Uh, very, very simple. Achieves the stated aims of taking health into account and then running from a potential threat. So that is how... Entity AI Flee by Health originally worked, and it achieves the goals, and it does it in a very simplistic and relatively s straightforward way. Uh, not very intelligent, though, because it doesn't take into account how much damage the uh, potential entities around you can deal. So, for example, if there's, say, a zombie with a severe weakness debuff who can no longer deal any damage at all, then villagers are still going to run from them if they're low on health. So there's a bit of a problem here. It also doesn't factor in large crowds. So 
I decided then to rewrite it into a and into this uh, this new version. Now you notice immediately that we no longer have a health percent. That's because this one doesn't use it. It doesn't need it actually. So it's not, so more or less everything else is okay. We've upgraded from entity creature, uh, whom you can see here, to entity future mob because we are now using some uh, some functions that are proprietary to entity future mob. Uh, which we'll be seeing in a quick moment. So, how has the execute changed? Well, first we are looping through everybody. So we don't we don't have that initial cutoff for if if the entity has higher health than the health percent because we don't have health percent. And exactly whether we should run is based on the amount of damage. So we look for all of the entity living base. Uh, this does include the uh, players. And we, there is, if that list is empty, then we've got no one to run from, so we don't need to worry. And then we are looking for a minimum distance. So again, we're looking for the closest entity to run from. And we're also looking for the sum total potential damage. So we loop through the list of entity living base and we get how much damage that they could specifically do to this entity. Uh, which is a feature of will get harm from entity feature mob so it takes the entity itself and it calculates how much damage this entity is going to potentially do to it within the next attack action and then if it's a entity living we run some more tests on it if it's an entity player then we do some different tests on it so we just got the one loop now instead of the two uh, much cleaner much more uh, rapid and straightforward so after that if we have found someone to run from we can continue, otherwise we quit out, return false. And here is where health percent gets replaced. So if the total possible damage is significant, let's say if it's more than half of the health of the entity, uh, so damage less than creature's total health over two, then we return false. If it's great, so if it's equal to or greater than half of your health, then run basically and then we still have this little thing here it's still not looping so it's still just quitting out whenever it finds one that doesn't work so it's a little bit wonky um but it's sort of a question of how reliable you want this to be i guess so i find a random target block away from the creature that we're trying to run from if we can't find one return null if the distance is less than two our target then return null uh, which we can get just from distance here so distance squared good and otherwise, start running. So, this task is able to respond to creatures with different potential damages to our entity. It is able to respond to different sizes of aggressive parties. So, for example, one zombie versus a whole horde of zombies. Uh, although it's still only running from one of them, the closest one, which isn't ideal. You could improve it there quite a bit. And that makes it, fundamentally, a lot more intelligent than the old Flea by Health. Because the Flea by Health here was just straightforward, am I hurt, is there anyone here that wants to hurt me? And this is, is there sufficient damage potential here that wants to be used against me that could massively hurt me? In which case, run. Have I walked into the wrong side, the wrong part of town? And this is, am I already in a brawl? So, this one is a lot more preemptive, it is a lot more intelligent, and it's a lot more able to understand its surroundings and the situation that it's in. And it's still taking the entity health into account, and it's still running from potential threats. So, these are two examples of the same of a task meeting the same criteria, but one of which is definably more intelligent about it. And we do that by taking more, uh, more information about the surrounding environment of the entity into account. Uh, but that is all of the boring Cody stuff that I know not all of you like. I know some of you like it, but not all of you. Uh, so let's hop into game, and we'll actually see how I've been developing with the mobs. Okay, so we've gotten, we've dispensed with the coding section that I know not everyone likes. Uh, so here is the thing that you are most likely going to all enjoy, and that is what I've been doing with the mobs of late, because this is the main thing that I can actually work on without Forge. So, I have a raid. Uh, an array of mobs uh, to demonstrate what's been going on. So you can hear them all clucking and squeaking and all sorts. Uh, 
So, and in here we have a witch and a future ocelot. Uh, you can tell by the arched back there that it's a future ocelot, so there's nothing else here is too obvious. And if I were to toss in some raw fish, then she is going to pick it up and she is going to start trying to tame this uh, this cat because she doesn't actually have a pet right now. Similarly, if I toss this uh, villager some bones, he's going to pick those up and he's going to try and tame the tame the wolf. Uh, whose name is apparently ID 1774. Uh, that's just for testing purposes, because I was trying to check if persistency was actually around. Uh, yeah, these guys will tame at their own will, so Haven has apparently attempted to tame. Uh, so, let's see, yep, Haven, so ID there is tamed, you can tell just by his, uh, his red name, his little red uh, color there. Uh, doesn't look like the witch has managed to tame the ocelot just yet, but uh, that could just be due to various testing issues. Uh, but, yeah, and there is now a uh, code based inside of the hate and hunt entity tasks, which which basically replace the original targeting tasks of vanilla Minecraft. So, if ID here is out hunting something, then Haven will follow him, and otherwise, if uh, ID isn't hunting anything, then he'll follow Haven. Uh, next up, we have the future chicken, which has gone sort of raptor style. Uh, these guys are currently just basic replicas of their uh, their chickeny modern counterparts. Uh, I was just working on getting the model in, which had some very very derpy results as it often does. Uh, but you can see he's got a jaw. He's got he's got his uh, little bill there. Right? He's got full blown feet now, which is nice. Little uh, degrade kind of raptory feet. Has a much longer tail. I have to sort of stabilize him because this guy is a fast runner and these guys, I'm thinking these guys will work in packs, uh, but we'll see how that goes with the AI later on. And have you, no you haven't tamed just yet, although you're being very very cruel to that ocelot. Okay, next on our list is the bat. Uh, again, this is currently just a complete model swap more than anything else. Uh, and I've also had to disable motion so that I can keep this guy contained, uh, but he's got Red eyes, he's got an actual muzzle now. He's got fangs, and he's got actual feet. Also, his wings have a lot more definition now. They are more than just uh, two dimensional uh, shapes, which is nice. And he's got a little, little tail at the back. <laughs> uh, so, the plan with these guys is that they'll be a lot less responsive to player movement, and they'll spawn more often. So, you'll generally go into a cave, and if, if there are any bats in there at all, you will generally find them hanging from the ceiling, and they'll be fairly unresponsive to your presence until you put in a bright light, and then they might not like you so much. Uh, but these guys should still be, by and large, as harmless as the modern world. Uh, next up is a change to spiders. So, you can see the female has some uh, string in her uh, little cage there, but the male doesn't. The male has been disabled from making uh, webbing now. So, since this guy tracks a lot across the countryside quite a bit to find the female, they are no longer going to be leaving webbing behind them, because that was a bit of a messy thing. Uh, next up, uh, in the F Problems with Forge video, um, a few a little while back you saw me modeling something, well this is the model, this is the slime body. He is what happens uh, when a slime and a skeleton fuse together, as you can probably surmise from the skeleton parts in there. You can see the slime eyes are just sort of slightly sticking out of the skeleton skull in there. The skeleton has no say as to what's going on with this slime body, uh, but the slime body hunts Morlocks. Uh, well, and he hunts Morlocks by attraction, so he's sort of like the uh, the female spider. He hunts by ambush. Uh, the actual like conversion is a little bit buggy. Previously, it was just if a slime hits a skeleton, it becomes a slime body, but that seemed kind of unbalanced because these guys are actually pretty tough. So, uh, I tried to then have the slime mount to the skeleton, have a chance of taking them in slime, but the, sli the skeletons have issues of targeting the slime that's riding them, and then they just sort of kill themselves trying. So, I'm probably going to be making some kind of uh, proto-slime body uh, that will just gradually turn into this guy. Uh, and lastly, I imagine I have the thing that everyone's been wanting to see, is having a bizarre saving issue right now, so if I log out, if I spawn one, log out, and log, log back in, then uh, he despawns for whatever reason, that I'm not entirely certain of at this precise moment. But, we can at least see him, uh, for the most part, so we have the creeper flower. Now, 
I need to work out how to fix where the head spawns at the head has some weird issues with its AI not initializing properly, and since they despawn when I respawn, you won't be able to see it. Um, but here we have the Creeper of the Future. So he has gone very much back to his planty roots. Uh, you can see he's got a nice little flower at the top here, which is, which is actually his head. And the only part of the Future Creeper that explodes is the head. The stem here, which is the main body with the legs, remains perfectly stable and intact, pre presuming, of course, that it survives the detonation. Uh, it can then go on to grow a new head. Uh, so that is the big problem that you'll probably be considering about uh, the futuristic creepers. Uh, they also, when they explode, lay down creeper, but since that's a new block, I haven't got that added yet. And other than that, uh, they have much better camouflage, uh, which you would see if this guy were targeting me at all, but that's fine because I haven't actually programmed that. Um, and there's a nice little bit of animation uh, to the creeper flower, which I have here is an egg, which is uh, when they don't have a stem whenever they are detached, because uh, you can either kill the head or the stem, whichever one you want to prioritize. Logically, you'd want to prioritize the head, as far as I'm concerned, but you know, if you kill the stem first, by whatever reason, then uh, they plop down to the ground like this. So that is what an unmounted stem head looks like, and eventually just dies because it has no support structure. Anyway, he drops squid. He drops ink sacs at the moment because he's based off of a squid. Uh, that, that's the that's, that is the mob that I modified to make that. Uh, although of course squids are still around. So that is it for the moment. I'm still working on pigs and sheep and cows and such. Uh, oh, and <laughs> the future chicken has laid an egg. Have you? No, you haven't tamed your cat. Oh. I don't know why you're being so, like, <laughs> why you're being stingy there. I know it's in your code. These guys, if you, uh, you probably just barely grasped it there, but, uh, if I toss something that she's particularly interested in, for example, uh, glowstone, maybe? No? You don't like glowstone? Okay. How about if I drop you some spider eyes? Are you gonna like some spider eyes, Miss Witch? Yes, you are. Okay. So if they are standing near a item drop that they can define whether or not they like, uh, that is a list of items that they want and a list of foods that they can eat, then they will walk over and they will grab it and that is added to their inventory for whatever reason they should happen to need later. So these guys do actually have hunger now, all of the future mobs do, so uh, that's presently these four and the spiders and the slime body and the creeper, oh the creeper stem does, and gradually they will starve to death unless they can get food. So that brings the ecosystem into even greater clarity. If they are not careful, these guys will die just normally. So uh, if you happen to take Haven uh, back to the present, uh, by whatever means, be it a mine factory reloaded safari net or shoving them, shoving them through a portal, I don't know, um, you will have to keep occasionally supplying them with food, because they will starve to death otherwise. Uh, although some of them, uh, namely the cre no noticeably the creepers, are photosynthetic, so just leave them in sunlight and they'll be okay for the most part. Uh, but that is more or less all that's changed so far uh, with the mobs, and I'll give you another update on what, uh, what is going on with these fellows with the next video. So, that in mind, I'll catch you all next time. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and or a favourite. Follow me on Twitter and subscribe to be notified of future updates. You can also check out the website where most other content is uploaded. That's all for now, catch you later.